In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some very simple techniques on how to create an HDR image from a single photograph. Uh, normally when you're working with HDR, you actually use multiple photographs, and where you take the same picture multiple times and vary the exposure by changing the shutter speed, so that for some of those photographs you're exposing for the shadows and some you're exposing for the highlights. That way you can combine all the photos and post in a program like Photoshop so that you take the high dynamic range of the original scene and tone map it into a single photograph that can render that dynamic range uh, into a normal display or print medium. Um, and typically you would do that by lowering the highlights or pushing the shadows so that you compress that tonal range into, uh, again, a dynamic range that the output medium can display. So the best way to do that is with multiple exposures because that gives you the highest quality output. Uh, but you can actually also do it with a single photograph, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, in this case, this is a photograph taken with the Nikon D7000, which is the latest gen generation of crop camera from Nikon. Uh, it shares the same Sony sensor as the new Pentax, Pentax K5 as well, and these two cameras are known for their very high dynamic range. And what dynamic range means in that regard is that you can take a photograph, expose for the highlights so that your highlights are not clipped, and then push the shadows and post, which is what I'm going to do and demonstrate here, uh, without introducing too much noise into the areas of the shadows that you've pushed. And so pushing and, uh, the shadows and creating a single photograph HDR is the same thing you're doing with a multi-exposure HDR, where you're tone mapping and compressing the tonal range, but instead of having the benefit of multiple photographs where each photograph is optimized for a certain part of the histogram and a certain part of that range, you're, you're, you're pushing and pulling a single photograph to create the same effect. So again, the, the quality of a single photograph HDR will never uh, match uh, multiple exposure, but with these latest generations of cameras and a high dynamic range, you can, you can still get a pretty uh, dramatic result. So what you see here is uh, Lightroom 3 on the left is the original photograph. On the right is the photograph after all the uh, changes I made to create the, the single exposure HDR. And I'm going to walk through the steps I've taken to produce this output. So let me first go ahead and revert this photograph to its original form. So before you even consider a post in Lightroom, uh, when you take the photograph, you need to be very careful with the exposure. You want to maximize your exposure so that when you import the photograph into Lightroom and start to d use these HDR techniques, you, you produce the best result. Now, the best way to expose is, um, in this case, you want to have your highlights as close as possible to the right of the histogram without clipping them. Now, here's the histogram here, and like most applications, whether it be Lightroom, Photoshop, or actually what's on the back of your camera on the LCD display, uh, the histogram shows on the left the shadow portions of the image and on the very right the highlight portions. And so anything that uh, exceeds the right edge of the histogram is what's called a clip, which means you've oversaturated the sensor and you've lost all the color detail rendition for, for that portion of the photograph. And so in Lightroom, you can actually display clipping by clicking on this arrow here. And then anything that's clipped in the photograph shows up as these red blotches. And so in this case, I wanted to expose this photograph for the, the highlights, which are these tiles, as well as the, some of these specular highlights on the edge of the roof. So these areas are clipped, but I didn't mind this because th this area doesn't have much detail anyway. You can see here for the non-clip regions, there's not much uh, color or texture detail regardless. As well as uh, on the edge of these tiles here, you can see a couple of uh, clip points. But again, these are just specular reflections, and you still the full color, color rendition uh, and luminous rendition of these tiles is kept intact. So to demonstrate how this, the highlights in this photograph were exposed just below the clipping point or just to the left of the clipping point, while w with that clipping display still on, I'll go ahead and push up the exposure of the entire photograph by just about a half a stop. And you can see here, by just increasing by half a stop, the amount of areas that are now clipped or beyond the saturation point increase greatly. And so if I would have exposed this just about a half a stop faster, I would have start, started to have lost some of the color detail uh, within these tile areas, which I wanted to avoid. And so this is one way to verify that uh, you've exposed to the right properly. Um, now, when you're out in the field with the camera, the way to do that, you have the same highlight clipping display on most cameras so that after you take a photograph and preview what you've shot, you can turn on highlight display where the camera will blink red or white for the portions of the photograph that are clipped. So if it's blinking red or white in an area that's important to you that you don't want clipped, that means you've overexposed and you need to increase your shutter speed to bring that exposure down of those highlights.
Um, now, if the areas that are blinking are uh, reflections off of metallic objects or water, well, th those are expected and you're, those are always going to be clipped because they're always going to be much brighter than the remainder of the image. And so you really want to just watch out for your clipping for the, the highlight areas that are important to you where there, there's detail otherwise, which in this case is the tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and revert this exposure back down to its original. And so we're going to go ahead and try to do an HDR adjustment to this photograph. And so in this case, all I really need to do is to bring up the shadows to compress the tonal range because you can see here I've exposed, and this is the upper edge of the highlights for the tiles, but there's obvious shadow regions here, and I want to match these shadows and bring them up closer to the midtones to compress that tonal range. So in this case, I'm going to use the gradient filter tool, which uh, works well for this because what I want to do is I'm going to actually set this to about three and a half stops. What I want to do is bring up the exposure to the shadows, and right at the edge where the shadows ends is where the, really the highlight begins. And so what this gradual neutral density filter is going to do is as I pull this up, it's going to increase the, the exposure most at the bottom or the origin of where I started dragging the tool, and then it's going to taper off that effect where I wind up or where I finish dragging the tool. So right at the bottom here, the exposure has been increased by whatever the amount I set, which in this case is a right around three and a half stops, but toward the edge of where I've, I've landed, it's only increasing it by some smaller amount, and you can actually see uh, some of the gradation of the exposure, so that it increases the exposure most here, and then it sort of tapers off. And so it just happens to work well for this photograph, because I'm budding up the shadows against where the highlight regions uh, begin. In other photographs where the shadows aren't so cleanly uh, demarcated from the highlight regions, you would use maybe the uh, the adjustment brush to sort of patch in and, 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 and touch up the areas that you want to push rather than having this big block of area. Uh, so again, this is a simple example because all the shadows are in one area. And so let me go ahead and turn the clipping display back on and you can see because I've dragged this and increased the exposure of all the shadow areas, I've also increased the exposure right at the, the edge of this roof line and I've now introduced clipping where before this area was not clipped but now it is. Um, in this case, it's fine because this area doesn't have much detail anyway, and it, it works for the photograph where the, the observer knows that this is a reflection. They wouldn't expect to see much detail, color detail there anyway. And so I'm fine with this area being clipped. This area did have some detail, which is now clipped, which is, is uh, less okay uh, because there the observer might expect some detail. But just to keep this example simple, I'm going to keep this, or, uh, keep this area remain clipped. Um, just to show you a, a simple way to do a local exposure adjustment uh, without making the example too complicated. So let me go ahead and turn that back off. And so, so the before picture, before I've, I've pushed the shadows or raised the shadows, you can see there's a lot of deep shadows here, uh, and you can't see much detail due to the low luminance. And where with the local uh, exposure adjustment, you can see I've uh, greatly um, uh, enhanced the, the exposure of the shadow area. Now, when you increase shadows, you're always going to introduce noise, and the amount of noise you introduce is based upon the, the camera and how well its shadows are captured and how noisy they are, as well as how far you had to push the shadows. It's, what, why it's important to expose for the right for the highlight areas is that it also brings up the shadows as high as possible so that uh, you know, even though you're not clipping the highlight areas, you're, you're, you're expanding the shadows as brightly as possible. That way, you don't have to increase the shadows as much in post because the more you increase the shadows, the more noise you're going to introduce. So for example, if I, didn't, if I hadn't exposed this photograph as much to the right for the highlights, I would have had to maybe push these shadows by more than three and a half stops, but maybe instead by five or six, which would uh, greatly increase the amount of noise. So even though three and a half stops is a lot of noise to, is, I'm sorry, is a lot to push the shadows, and you can see here I haven't hardly introduced any noise into the photograph. Uh, some of the noise would be uh, obscured in this case by the texture, so it's not the best example. But you can, you can see here, even for the areas which don't have much texture, there's hardly any noise being introduced, and that's pretty incredible for a three and a half stop push. And it's a demonstration of how far these cameras have come along with their dynamic range. And so I'm pretty much done here. I've sort of brought up the shadows to, to match the, the luminance of where the, the midtones are. Now, another step I'm going to take is also uh, use another graduated neutral density but on the sky. In this case, I'm going to reduce the exposure rather than increase it. And so as I drag, I'm going to actually put, hold down the shift key, which is what I use for the, the shadow push. And you can see here when you press the shift key, it, it levels the tool. That way, if you're trying to apply this in a level fashion, you can do that without 
having to be too steady with the mouse. And you can see here as I drag, it's doing the gradient effect, but in reverse, where instead of increasing the exposure, now I'm decreasing it. In this case, I'm doing this because I want to punch up the sky. I want to make that sky deep blue, which is actually how it was when I observed it. And it was sort of uh, brighter in the, the original photograph because I've exposed and so what I'm really doing is just restoring the photograph as, as I saw it at the time I, I, I took, the, took the exposure. And so um, this also sort of enhances that HDR look because HDR is all about tone mapping and, and contrast. And so I've, I've increased the, the contrast of the sky, which increases the, the appearance of saturation as well, while also pulling up the contrast or the brightness of the shadow area, which again creates that HDR look. In this case, I like the way this looks because it, it's it's realistic to me. It's you know, th the colors are a bit punchy, but again, this is how the image actually looked at the time I, I shot it. So, this is what HDR is all about for me. is It's not about creating the the surrealistic kind of pictures, but more just trying to recreate the original photo that I saw at the time I took the, the photograph, which you can't really get with a single exposure with the default tone curves that the tools are going to apply because they're going to sort of move everything into the middle and you're going to lose that original contrast uh, that you saw in the original photograph. So that's pretty much it as far as the, uh, the HDR for this example, but like I said, it's a very simple example. Uh, what I'm also going to do just as a the course of my normal workflow is do some sharpening as well. And so um, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag the masking slider and because what I want to do is only sharpen the areas of the photograph that uh, that need sharpening and it won't produce artifacts otherwise. And so normally for this kind of photograph where you have both the sky and some foreground content, you want to have none of the sky sharpened because doing so would create some artifacts. Um, and in this case, I only want the detail of the building to be sharpened. So I've dragged this to around 32 on the slider, which has some of the clouds still uh, sharpened because there's some maybe some edges of these crisp clouds that I want to have sharpened. But other than that, I want the remainder of the sky to be unsharpened. And so I'm going to increase this. This really isn't a tutorial on sharpening, but I'm going to increase this just to about um, the radius is fine for this and the detail I'm going to increase here just enough to not increase, art increase artifacts but maximize the detail on the edge of these tiles, which gives it that real uh, dramatic contrast with the uh, lack of detail in the sky. And so that's about it. Like I said, a very simple example of HDR and how to do com tonal compression and mapping on a single image and sort of get the same kind of thing you would get with multiple image, um, maybe perhaps with slightly more noise in the shadows, but otherwise uh, a very dramatic and acceptable result.